and I'm going to guide you through a one minute breathing relaxation. First breath in. Feel your lungs fully and hold it. And out. Push it all out. And in. Deep, deep breath. Feel your lungs fully and hold it. And out. Let it all out. And in again. Let it feel your lungs fully and hold it. And out. Let it all out. Thank you. And we light our candle and I welcome you to collective worship. What did Jesus say? That's right. I am the light of the world. Good morning, everyone. And it's great to be back in school. My family are getting better. And thank you for everyone that saw me yesterday to ask how we all are. This week in Collective Worship, we're learning about working together. And you know what, children? It's not just humans that work together. Here's my special guest, Mr. Brown, to explain how nature works together. Hi, Webb. Do you know when you're going to be ready to play today? I'm just about ready, and I have a great idea about what to do. No way! I had an idea, too. Let's say them at the same time. One, two, three. Let's, Let's build, build a cardboard, cardboard boat! boat. Wow, we were thinking the same thing. I came up with a plan to make a big, strong boat with lots of tape and glue. It will look kind of plain, but there's no way it'll sink. Oh, my plan was to make a small boat with a bunch of decorations, like a big striped sail and paint and maybe ribbon. No way. I don't want to spend a bunch of time decorating a small boat. Well, I don't want to make a big, boring boat either. Let's do it my way. Never! Quack, 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 well, there's only one thing to do. Let's go talk to Mr. Brown. So you see, Mr. Brown, we don't know what to do. Which boat should we build? Thanks for asking you two. This is definitely a challenge. But you know what this reminds me of that might help? Mutualisms. What's a mutualism? Is that a kind of animal? Not quite. But it can involve animals. Mutualisms are when two living things work together to help each other. Those living things might be two animals, or a plant and an animal, or even another combination. But let's focus on animals for right now. In a mutualism, each animal has a special talent or talents, and they use those talents to help their partner. The animals aren't necessarily friends, and they're not the same kind of animal. So Bill and Webb, since you're siblings, and both ducks, you couldn't be in mutualism. But I do think you could learn a thing or two from them about how to work together. Hmm, okay, I wanna learn more. Sure. Well, there are lots of examples out there, but I can tell you about some of my favorites. One of my favorite examples of a mutualism is between clownfish and sea anemone. Clownfish are small fish that live in the ocean and they normally have orange, black, and white stripes. And this is a sea anemone. It might look like a plant, but it's actually an animal. It has wiggling tentacles with lots of stingers, and in the middle of those tentacles is a mouth. Anemone eat things like fish, crab, or shrimp, and they spend most of their lives stuck in the same spot. But here's the cool thing. Clownfish live inside the sea anemone surrounded by its tentacles. The anemone stingers don't bother the clownfish, but they can hurt other animals. So if any other fish shows up that wants to hurt the clownfish, it can just swim inside its home and let the sea anemone protect it. Meanwhile, the clownfish can chase away any other animals that might want to hurt the sea anemone. But clownfish also have another talent, their poop. Clownfish poop has important nutrients in it, 
which are things like vitamins and minerals that help plants and animals grow. So, when the clownfish poop near the sea anemone, their nutrients can help the anemone get bigger and stronger. So, both animals have a special skill, and they can use that skill to help their partner. That's how mutualisms work. That makes sense. So, do mutualisms only happen with underwater animals? Good question, Bill. Mutualisms can happen in all kinds of places, from the water to the land. In fact, another one of my favorite examples includes two animals that both live on land, coyotes and badgers. Badgers are found all over the world. They have fuzzy bodies, big claws, and most have striped faces. They live in tunnels underground and are usually only awake at night. Badgers like to eat worms, but they also will eat just about anything else. Coyotes are related to dogs and wolves, and they look a lot like them too. They have pointy ears, walk on all four legs, and have big fluffy tails. Like badgers, they're also normally awake at night or in the very early morning or late evening. And also like badgers, they'll eat just about anything, but their favorite food is meat. Another thing about coyotes is that they're great runners. They can run super fast, which helps them chase down the animals they want to eat. So when a coyote pairs up with a badger, that's how the coyotes help. They can chase down food that the badger isn't fast enough to get. So what do the badgers do? I was getting to that. But what do you think they do, Webb? Hmm, well you said they have big claws and they eat worms. So do they dig up worms to share with the coyotes? That's good thinking. And you're really close. Do you have other ideas? Do they maybe catch animals underground? Like the coyotes catch animals that run fast? Good thinking, Webb. That seems right to me. You got it. So if an animal, a badger or a coyote wants to eat, escapes into a tunnel, the badger can chase after them and catch them. Then they share their food with the coyote. Whoa, that's so cool. Isn't nature awesome? There are so many kinds of animals with different body parts and habitats. And sometimes animals can use their skills to help others around them. So Bill and Webb, Thanks to what you learned about mutualisms, is there any way you can build a boat together? Hmm, well I'm good at measuring and using tape, so I know how to make boats that are really sturdy. And I'm good at decorating and making things look nice. So maybe if we use both of our skills, we can make the best boat ever. That sounds fun. Thanks for your help, Mr. Brown. It was my pleasure. I'm glad you learned something, and I'm excited to see your boat when it's done. And thanks for joining us, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Thank you for talking to us. But you know what, children? It's not just nature that works together. We humans work together too. There are so many things in life that you just cannot do on your own. Hey guys, it's me again, Douglas. And I wanted to talk to you guys today about cooperation. Yeah, so and that just means like working together with other people. You know, there's a whole lot in this world that we just cannot do by ourselves and we need other people to help us. So I really learned this, this concept, this idea at uh, my last family reunion. Now my mom comes from this really, really big family and so I've got a lot of cousins, like a lot of cousins. I've got like 40 cousins or something like that. And there's like more cousins getting added every year. I don't know, I don't even know exactly how many of us there are, but we were kind of split off into like two groups. There's the older cousins and the younger cousins and, and I'm one of the younger cousins. And and uh, one of our older cousins, though, his name is Travis, and Travis is, well, he's still, so he's in high school, and uh, he thinks he's really cool, okay, and he's always, like, bragging to his younger cousins, and he, he kind of picks on us a little bit, too, and one time he, he wanted to play football with us, all of us younger cousins versus Travis, and we were like, yeah, yeah, all together, we can totally beat Travis, there were, like, 20 of us versus Travis, and, and we were playing tackle football, by the way, so Travis, you know, he takes the ball, and he starts to run, and uh, we start going after him, and when we try to tackle him, each one of us is trying to tackle him, and we just, like, bounce off of him, you know, or he just, like, hits us, and we fall down, and it was like throwing a bunch of tennis balls at a brick wall. And so he just ran into the touchdown, and he's like, yeah, I'm the best, I'm the best. And he he was, you know, kind of kind of showboating a little bit. And he kept scoring and kept scoring and kept scoring, and we're, you know, we're just like, we got to be able to do this. we got to figure this out. And one of my cousins, he had this great idea. He said, let's stop trying to tackle him, and let's just – hang on. Okay, so before we were trying to knock him down, but one at a time we can't knock him down. So we said, okay, we're just going to hang on for dear life. So this time when he would run past us, we would just hang on. We couldn't knock him down, but we could hang on and and he could drag us for a little while. And he could drag like 
four or five of us. He's, he's pretty big, but he could not drag all of us, and he just kept getting slower and slower, and we're all jumping on him, and we're all yelling, bring him down, bring him down. And so, so he's getting slower and slower, and there's more of us just piling on and piling on and piling on, and finally, you couldn't even see Travis anymore. There were so many of us cousins on top of him, he couldn't move at all. And once we figured that out, he didn't score again for the whole rest of the day. And so when we worked together, when we came up with a plan and we, we worked together, instead of trying to just work one at a time, we were able to win. And it's kind of cool because when God made the universe, after he made everything, you know, he'd make one thing and he'd say, and he saw that it was good. And he'd make the next thing and he saw that it was good. And it was good and it was good. Everything that he made was good. But there was only one thing that wasn't good. And he totally fixed it. But the thing that he said wasn't good, he said it's not good for a man to be alone. Yeah, it's not good for us to be alone. We might feel like we can do things on our own, but we, we really can't. You know, even though Travis is way bigger than all of us, he couldn't take us on his own. And we definitely couldn't take him one-on-one. -on -one. But if we work all together, we can accomplish big things. And so, you know, I use tackling Travis as an example of, of cooperation, but, but that's just a silly thing. There are so many important things that we can do when we cooperate or things that we can do better when we cooperate. For example, let's say you want to you wanna help out the needy in your town. Okay, cool. You could raise a little bit of money and, and you could, you know, maybe buy some food and take it to the homeless shelter. But what if, instead of just doing it by yourself, you got a whole bunch of people all together doing the same thing, all working together, all cooperating towards a common goal? How much do you think you could get done if you got a big group together? Yeah, a lot. A lot of stuff you could get done. So my challenge to you guys today is that you would not be like Travis and think that you're all that and that you can do everything on your own, but that you'd be more like, like us bunch of cousins and all work together to get things done. Because when we cooperate, we can do big things. Thanks, Douglas. That was Douglas. And our harvest festival is fast approaching, so we're going to practice our harvest song once more. The lyrics will appear on the board. Remember, we are repeating the chorus twice. The words will appear on the board, or the, the lyrics, should I say. The lyrics will appear on the board. <laughs> It's time for a prayer and if you'd like this prayer to be your prayer it's amen at the end you're welcome to look at the candle flame or you can put your hands and your eyes together dear lord bless our school that by working together and playing together we may learn to serve you and help one another amen well that concludes our collective worship for today Remember, work hard, be kind, look after yourselves, and I really will see you around school.